Hello and welcome back to Learning English Pro. In this video, we will be taking a look at the names in English of lots of different types of herbs. There are some differences between American and British English, so I will be covering that too. Okay, let's jump straight in and start with our first herb. In British English, this herb is called coriander. Repeat after me, coriander. And in American English, it has quite a different name, cilantro. Repeat after me, cilantro. And from this herb, we have coriander seeds, which are also used in cooking. And interestingly, this is what they are called in America as well, coriander seeds. Our next herb is chives. Repeat after me, chives. And did you know that chives are a member of the onion family? They have a very distinctive flavor. A common verb often used when preparing chives is the verb to dice. And on screen, you can see this in action. Dice. Chives are commonly used as a topping for fish and soups and lots of other types of dishes, just to add an additional little bit of flavor. Let's move on to our next herb, which is tarragon. Repeat after me, tarragon. Tarragon has lots of synonyms. Our first one being dragon's wart. Also used is estragon. And we also have silky wormwood. These synonyms are quite old, so I would stick with tarragon. Our next herb is the bay leaf. Repeat after me, bay leaf. And this herb comes from the plant called the bay laurel. Repeat after me, bay laurel. The bay leaf has many health benefits. It gives lots of vitamins to us when we eat it, along with lots of nutrients. It is also known to be a remedy for migraines or bad headaches. Our next herb is sage. Repeat after me, sage. Like the bay leaf, sage can also be used for medical remedies, especially for digestive problems. These include stomach pain and diarrhea, and it is known to help with depression and memory loss. We also have the act of burning sage. Now this is used for lots of different reasons. Some people believe that burning sage can cleanse a room or a house of bad energy. Our next herb is basil. Now this is American English pronunciation, basil. In British English, it is pronounced basil. Repeat after me, basil. Basil or basil is very common throughout the world, but did you know it is a tropical plant? And it is also known to help lower blood pressure. It does this by helping with the blood flow throughout the body. And basil or basil is used in lots of cuisines around the world. My favorite being Italian cuisine, and here you can see it on a delicious pizza. Our next herb also has a difference between American and British English pronunciation. In American pronunciation, it is called oregano. Oregano. And in British English pronunciation, it is called oregano. Repeat after me, oregano. Let's move on to our next herb, which is mint. Repeat after me, mint. And did you know there are over 600 different varieties of mint? And there are lots of different uses for it, like in tea, and in chewing gum, as well as lots of different types of confectionery. And you can find it in lots of different cocktails. And let's not forget, toothpaste. Up next, we have the herb parsley. Repeat after me, parsley. 
Like the other herbs we've already discussed, parsley is very healthy for you. It is full of vitamin K, which is essential for bone health and bone structure. And in my home country of Ireland, we make parsley sauce, which is really good with ham. And I have to say, it's probably my favorite sauce. Yum, yum. Our next herb is thyme. Repeat after me, thyme. As well as cooking, thyme is also used in mouthwash. But thyme has much older uses. It was used by the Egyptians in the process of mummification. And the ancient Greeks used thyme in their baths and burned it as incense in their temples. They believed it was a source of courage. Commonly associated with thyme is the herb rosemary. Rosemary. If you have ever planted and grown rosemary in your garden, you will know it is very fast growing. It can spread very quickly. Rosemary is native to the Mediterranean and as you can see on screen, it produces some beautiful blue flowers. In medical terms, rosemary is an anti-inflammatory and it can really help boost your immune system. Okay, let's move on to our next herb, which is simply called dill. Repeat after me, dill. This herb is commonly used to season seafood and it's quite tasty. It can also be found as an ingredient in lots of different types of sauces. And like many of the herbs we've already covered, it has some medical health benefits. It can really be useful to aid in oral hygiene. And would you believe dill brings us to the end of our English lesson on herbs? I hope you learned a lot from this lesson, as well as pronunciation, we also learned lots of the additional benefits and uses for herbs throughout the world, and who knew they could be so healthy for you? As usual, I've posted a full word list in the description below, so make sure to check that out and revise the words and practice them with your friends. And if you're looking to keep your English vocabulary healthy, why not check out the vast array of English vocabulary lessons I have loaded up to my YouTube channel. No matter what your area of interest, you're bound to find the English vocabulary lesson for you. And if not, let me know and I'll make one for you. And coming up on screen are some video suggestions just for you. Don't forget about the word list in the description below and there you can also find the links to my social media. And while you're here, why not subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay updated on all my latest videos. That just leaves me to say I hope you have a great day and remember, keep learning English like a pro.